Hi, Jim. Hi, Becky. Hey, AJ. Hi, Jim. Not ready to take my coat off. <laughs> Uh, 6.30. Everybody healthy? Yep. Good. Yeah. I, um, you I'm, the, I'm the last member of my <laughs> family, extended family to, to to get COVID, so I'm, I haven't gotten it yet. I'm feeling like maybe I'll be one of those lucky people that, <laughs> for some reason, just this is uh, yeah. This would have been the summer for me to get it too. I was like surrounded by oh everybody. Yeah. Have you gotten the most recent uh, booster? I did. I got the the bivalent like um, maybe two weeks ago at UMass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got my flu shot too. Yeah. AJ was a was a, was the um, uh, did you uh, schedule that um, uh, appointment at at, you know, at UMass Room One Hundred One or did you just show up? No, no. I, I I this was I think so. I I want to say maybe it was more like three weeks ago. So it was it was pretty much in the first week or so that they were offering mm -hmm. the new. Um, you know the, the new vaccine so there was a lot of demand and it was it was by appointment only so but oh, it was okay. very easy to schedule like online i think i think i made the appointment mm -hmm. maybe four or five days before that seemed to be enough time I don't, yeah no. i've been going to walgreens and um in in athol orange which is up to up to <laughs> this most recent uh, time has been just a walk-in. You know they haven't yeah. had any problems, but apparently CVS has stopped uh, administering or giving the vaccine, and that has just uh, oh, really? turned on you know, turned on the taps at Walgreens because now they're flooded with people, and they have to make appointments two weeks in advance. So I was curious about UMass, which yeah, maybe were... I have to say, I mean, I've found, I mean, we I've been using UMass for like my whole family for the, for vaccines since the beginning of the or whatever, since they introduced them. Mm -hmm. And it's always gone very smoothly for me making the appointments. And when I get there, I never really have to wait very long, maybe mm -hmm. more than 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So if you're still looking, I would recommend that. Okay, I think that's what I'll have to do. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hey, Bob. Bob. Hey, Bob. When I say everybody, I mean whoever's here. Yeah. Some, some uh, people MIA here. Huh? George is uh, off in Nepal trekking around. Exactly. And Jim, Jim is not back from the Dolomites yet. Yeah, oh, he's in the Dolomites. My goodness. Mm -hmm. I thought <laughs> we were expecting Melody, but uh, we can do a quorum. Yeah. Quorum. Jim, I'll I'll uh, I'll email you the link to UMass. If the website's not as easy to find as you might think, but so uh, I'll send it to you. Uh, oh, could you was... send it to me too? Yeah, sure. Because okay. yep. I um I haven't gotten it yet because I just had COVID, so I was yeah letting it sit for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think t talking to the nurses there, they were saying you know you had to wait two months since your last booster or if you've had covid three months since you since you had it that yeah. was, oh okay that that's was, the answer that was the guidance they were giving yeah 
-hmm. All right, so I have two months, two months and a week to go. We can start. Yeah, I think we should start. Um, okay. All right. I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't say this out loud, but I wondered if today might be a little bit of a shorter meeting. I feel like it wasn't quite as robust an agenda, but <laughs> knocking on wood. Okay, so we've got minutes from uh, September 14th. Yeah. Uh, I had a typo and then a question uh, on 1A, I think the one in 100% was like a different oh. character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Explanation mark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you were just so excited to write that sentence. But yeah. 100% right. modified. Yeah. So, I'll um, okay. And then the question I had, and I'm not sure I have a strong opinion about it myself, but um, you know, a lot of the, in the, in the items where there was discussion and different perspectives mm -hmm. uh, offered, um, we, we, you've, you've done a um, very detailed job of laying out the different comments. Mm -hmm. We're not right now, for the most part, attributing comments to individual people who shared them. And it seemed like that was um, intentional and just thought I'd ask like what your thoughts were about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I um, have taken minutes for different groups before. Yeah. And I um, sort of evolved to trying to just reflect what the committee's discussion is right. rather than do attributions. And, and then if we come to a conclusion that we vote on, then I record that. That's my philosophy. Okay. Um, does anybody else have, again, I, I didn't, I was just kind of more curious what the, um, what your kind of rationale was. Um, so that, that seems fine to me, but I just was wondering if others had an opinion, because it is a little bit, obviously we've got new people, different roles. So Bob? I just, did, again, it's not, uh, I, I don't see why we, if said, we can't say AJ says, Susie says, I don't see why we shouldn't have attribution for what people are saying. It seems to be part of the story of that should be recorded. But I don't know, Susie. You have more experience, obviously, than I do. But from all the meetings I've I've attended uh, and been involved in minutes, either making them or reading them, I just, I think it's usually uh, attribution is given about who's speaking, uh, making his voice or her voice known. You know. So I would just prefer that personally. I think, uh, Jim. Yeah, I, I have uh, this, I have a, um, a question, uh, Susie, for you. Um, on 8C, um, what ex you said, um, what is a building envelope? A curious phrase. I was wondering what you um, meant by that. That must have been from my meeting because I, uh, the building envelope consultant, came to Shootsbury and walked through the school. And building envelope means the, you know, the the outer walls, the insulation. That is the air moving in and yeah. out of places that it shouldn't be moving in and out of. And uh, another word for it is, what is the other word? Yeah. Weatherization. Maybe that would be a better, you know, people just randomly reading this might wonder what that is. I, I was curious too, because I hadn't heard that term used specifically. I mean, I, I guess I could have probably guessed what it might mean, but um, I think I'd change it to the one that you suggested, Becky. Well, um, I would put that in parentheses. I'm sorry. Yeah, at the meeting, she used the word building envelope. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I used it because I set up an appointment to, for the building envelope audit to be done. So uh -huh. I think we could put in parentheses weatherization. Yeah, that would I, be good. They use the term in the, in the grant. So there's two different terminologies for it. But I think if we put that in parentheses, sure. then, then people will learn. Sure, right. that'll be fine. 
it's I'm surprised that you haven't heard that term. It's been around for a long time. Uh, maybe because I'm a builder, I'm more familiar with it. Yeah, I, I'm, I was thinking of the average reader. Um, it's kind of a fun visualization. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I was call it build, building envelope and be a little more high class, a little posh. Okay. <laughs> um, on the on the earlier subject of like uh, attribution of comments, um, I think the one su suggestion that I think I do have an opinion about, Susie, it did obviously it wasn't relevant for this last set of min minutes, but if there are non FinCom members that make a contribution during a meeting, a, a guest, the town resident that happens to be attending the meeting. Uh, my instinct there is that that would be kind of useful to record it in that case. Yeah, I, I do. And, and again, my point is that we have a discussion as a group. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody is not in our group and they make a comment, I, I identify the speaker. Okay. All right. Anybody else have a suggestion or question about the minutes before we vote to approve them? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. We just have one correction. Second. Um, I think I should abstain from this because I was not present for the whole meeting. Was that reasonable? I think that's usually typical, yeah. Does that matter for us in terms of uh, having a quorum vote on an individual item? Do we need four people? Becky, do you have an idea? <laughs> it seems like you should have a quorum vote. Yeah. But you do have a quorum vote. Bob's going to abstain. Right, right. Okay, so yeah. Four people. That, that counts as, okay, gotcha. Um, all right, so uh, let's do our roll call vote. I feel like the our usual order is all skewed up, <laughs> screwed up with people, with people out, so. Bob? I'm just saying, I'm saying. Yep. Helen Way, aye. Cashew, aye. Closure, aye. Okay. So that motion passes 3 0. One, one abstention. Okay. Thank you, Susie. Yep. All right. Next up, uh, just thought we'd do a quick update on um, status of the budget request letter and form. I know Susie, you, um, thank you, you did the hard work of like pre-populating all the forms that I can't imagine that was a quick activity. So thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and did, did just, uh, is, did all of them go out and to department heads? I put them, them all in their mailboxes, okay. which um, I just did. Um, mm -hmm. Susie did populated eight of the departments, all the ones that are on the master list. Okay. Um, the only thing that struck me as I was reading back through the letter is it says that they are pre-populated, but for the majority, the other 30 or, or so departments and stuff, they're not pre-populated. So does that, that mean pre-populated? Um, Susie put in the 20 FY23 budgets as they are today so that P the departments already had that information as they move forward. So who, who um, so it might be good to have a list of who yeah. everybody is. It's all departments. It's all our departments. So who and is all our and all our committees. So it's like it's the cemetery committee, it's everybody. So um, we don't usually get budgets from them. What's our, how do we interface that? Well, we do on occasion when they need changes. So everybody needs the alert that if they have an issue going on, like the cemetery, another year, the building inspector, not the building, the electrical inspector had an issue that he wanted to bring forward. So everyone always gets the notice. I see. And um, so we, we only meet with them in the event that they, they request. that they either request a meeting or 
are requesting a different budget amount. Right. That, okay, I see. Like con concom, and then that year we had planning board um, okay. put in a request, and I, yeah, and they need to really look at their budget again this year because if it's you know they they bumped it up, and we need to know if they still think that's those that they need to have it at that level or not. So. Got it. Okay. Do you have a suggestion now at this point in time what you think we should do? Um, I think it's fine the way it is, but I think the letter, um, I probably should have made, but I had I had just finished copying the letter for everybody, so I didn't want to throw them out. I should have adjusted the letter for the others and just used the, the cover letter with a paragraph about your, you know, it's pre-populated. Um, with FY23, I should have only used that on the eight that were. Yeah, I mean, maybe next year, now that we've, you know, flagged this issue, maybe next year we can just write the sentence to say that, um, you know, larger departments. larger departments will have their FY whatever year um, budget amounts pre populated on the form or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, right, but I still didn't understand what pre-populated means uh, from your last. I, I wrote in all of the budgets for eight departments, um, the budget lines for and showed them their FY23 approved budget. So when they go to propose for FY24, they can see the number right there and understand where what kind of proposal they're making. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, great. And um, I'm trying to remember what deadline did we give them? We said just by the November end of October. November 1st? Right? Okay. I think November 1st. Okay, got it. Great. And then our first, uh, first budget review is November 15th with highway and police. So Becky, I guess you'll flag for us if there's you know, any delays or any wrinkles, but otherwise I would assume if we're meeting with them on the 15th, that, you know, maybe around the 8th, we, we um, you know, which is sort of a week beyond their deadline, um, you know, we would have a copy of the highway and police department budgets to look at for the 15th. Yeah. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. All right, cool. So that's moving forward. Um, Bob? I just want to say on that particular subject, I think uh, I've been frustrated in the past because there's been, uh, we didn't, haven't had that information in a timely way. So hopefully we can emphasize that this year. And also that the people, when they do show up, the department head shows up, he doesn't make a last minute change just at the meeting you know, or just prior to the meeting so that we can actually have time to uh, you know, review these things and it's, you know, without having to do it in a, at the meeting, you know, have some advanced information. So I hope that they'll, they'll, that we got that message across and I hope that we can get the information ahead of the meeting, you know, a week is, week is adequate, I guess, but uh, we don't need to have any changes at the meeting uh, and we shouldn't, we, somehow or other, we should be able to emphasize that point to people. Have we ever had? Changes at the meeting? We have had. We've had changes at the meeting or, or after the meeting and then another meeting. And so sometimes it gets a little bit hard to track these things. Uh, uh, but I, I think that the, the, the department head should have um, an understanding that these things should be conducted in an orderly process. And we need the information ahead of time. And, and we don't need, you know, sometimes, well, obviously there are departments like the school, for example, that doesn't have all the information uh, regarding their budget. Uh, until later in the in the, in the process, but that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just changing something or asking for an additional item or making an additional request after that initial uh, form is, is already submitted. Becky? Um, Bob, I'm just I'm just wondering why you why you approach it with such um, rigidity. Um, typically, if they do change, if they have a valid reason, 
and that they present. And, you know, we've got six months to go till the budget's final at the point we start. And a lot of things can change. So I, I really, and typically the budgets don't even change from year to year. And, you know, the only recent changes we've seen, they've trimmed them where they could. Um, so I, I'm just kind of wondering what your thoughts are. I, I don't want to give the impression that I'm going to be rigid about it. If somebody has a good reason to change something, certainly would listen to that and consider it. But I don't, I think that it's been, uh, it could be tightened up. It could, pe people are coming in thinking, well, I can change it later. I, that's the impression I get. So never I just happened. think that we could ask these, this is a this is a serious deliberative process and we should expect people to have give us complete information to the best of their ability from the get-go. That's all, you know? Well, I believe they do. So I have a, a process suggestion that might be helpful for, for a few different things that I wanted to run by you. Um, since most of the budgets kind of get sort of dumped um, around the same time, because we've given them all a you know, single deadline. And obviously I think there's some departments that we know are gonna be later, like the elementary school, but, but we get a lot of them at one time. Would, I, I was wondering if it might be useful for the committee to have like a virtual folder, like a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive where I could, put all of the budgets, Becky, that you, um, that, you know, that, that, that are ready to be shared with the committee, I can sort of put them in that one archive and that would be available for committee members. And, you know, I think like speaking to Bob's point, I know Bob, like you, you, you know, you, you like to take your time reviewing, um, these materials and documents before our meetings. And I think it's sort of, we all have kind of a different way of doing our committee work. And so if it was just like, there was a, a directory, a folder that we could all, that we all had access to, um, that we could pull those budgets, you know, whenever we are ready to kind of review them as opposed to like going through your email. Is that something that, you know, if I, if I sort of took responsibility for creating that folder, Becky, would that, be something you'd have any concerns about? Or? Um, I've had trouble with Google Drive, but I think it had to do with limitations of um, storage space on my computer. So I right. get, uh, if I get to a point on my, I can't, you know, I've, uh, my email freezes when I get mm -hmm. to a certain point and I've had to right. dump most everything that I have in Google Drive to keep my okay. emails from disappearing. I see. I mean, that's my technical problem, but I think the emails, we have a new vendor and they're trying to get a higher limit. So I don't hit that maximum right. amount of emails as quickly. Cause I can't, I can't delete like other yeah. people because of public records. So, so what if you, um, I think pretty much as you've done in the past, you know, when you get the budgets and they're ready to be shared. If you can email them to me, and I would sort of take responsibility for having a shared Google Drive that I'll manage on my end. I think the other benefit is that sometimes we do get like an updated budget, and I'll just always make sure that the most recent version of it is in that drive, so that when somebody goes to pull up the school budget, they're not looking at you know a version that's two iterations old or something like that. Does that seem uh, doable? Can I ask you a question about that, AJ? Yeah. If you set up this drive as you as you suggested, we can yeah. then upload documents from there and print them and so forth. Yeah, exactly. So okay. it would well, um, sounds like a good thing. Yeah. I think you know you would um you know there would be a web address for it that I would obviously share with all of you and and then anytime you went to that you could you could either just review them in your web browser or you can download them. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Should we try that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. do that. All right. So we'll do that. Um, okay. So budget process is moving forward. Okay. Next up, um, I just put 
an item on here, just update on school roof project. So I don't know if there's any new updated information that uh, Becky, you could share with us. Um, the building committee has um, uh, is at, is reviewing a quote for um, it's the one actually that with Gale Engineering, they had originally sent Bob a proposal. Um, we sent them additional information to get it more refined um, mm -hmm. and dealing with um, additional issues. So they're reviewing that and um, hope to move forward soon. Great. On that. Is, is that that's the different company that did the part over the gym? Yes, it is. And is, is the company that did the part over the gym, are they putting in a bid? Um, it This would probably be just an evaluation that would assist us in writing the full scope for the design work. So this is just for the engineering. Did we, I, I'm trying to remember, I think it was actually before I joined the committee. Did, did we have a separate engineer do a similar review? Yeah. For the, okay, is that so, firm? No, we went, we did it. More, this is more complicated because of all the moisture issues gotcha. and problems that um, were even more, more further identified by the building envelope mm -hmm. review and the air quality review. So it's, um, we're trying to make sure that we cover all the bases on okay. uh, with, the, with the design work that we get. Okay. Because it's so, kind of not as straightforward as as the other part was not that the, the gym roof wasn't straightforward but we had a we had a lot of information about where where the problems were as a number of them had already been re addressed okay so will there only be one company um bidding for that engineering study this is a the first step is likely to be like i said the evaluation um, and then um, potentially go out to bid for um, the full design work. What is, okay. is Gail going to work on the evaluation? No. I'm sorry? When does Gail start this process? What does this kick off? Um, as soon as they get the sign off. Okay. And that's so the that's building that's committee. The building committee makes a recommendation to the select board and then sign off then presumably happens. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. So the build, building committee is waiting for a revised scope from from the engineering firm. Is that right? But given they the new have the revised. They have the revised. Oh, they have it. Okay, got it. Okay. Have, there's two things. They have the revised scope for the evaluation, and then the evaluation will be instrumental in defining the full design scope. Okay, got it. Okay. And was that company D or G A L? What? How do you spell their name? G A L E. Okay. Okay. All right, so sounds like progress. So that's great. Um, okay, and I know we had a note in the in the minutes that we might hear some new development from MSBA, although there's really no, not any confidence that they'll be funny. But uh, is there? I assume there's no news from from the MSBA about. Um, the original, the original letter that had gone out early said MSBA would um, have their decisions made in October, and that mm -hmm. was revised to say October to December. Got it. Okay. So they put off their decision making, but um, the other issue that the only issue that's very alive with MSBA is the boilers. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm pretty sure they're not going that even if it was potentially, it'll have to be reviewed if we get it. Um, mm -hmm. And then it'll be, you know, whether we would take it or not is uh, debatable. Their pricing for new boilers came in at $900,000. <laughs> and yeah. Right. Well, uh, it's certainly debatable. Uh, it's been debatable all along, but you know. Anyway, we'll we'll see what happens, and then we'll debate it. If necessary. I don't think there's going to be a lot of debate, but it will. <laughs> At that I moment, think it will be easy to. 
dismiss. But we'll see what happens. Um, maybe they'll come up with a, something different, but who knows? It's not, it never was the reason for going to the MSVA. So, you know, we went for the roof and the roof is not um, moved forward. Yeah, we, we have to replace the boilers that are we have functional, but we can't get the roof from them. You figure it out, I can't. Yeah. Um, can I bring up an issue that's somewhat related to this? Uh, that is what we were talking yeah. about, the building envelope earlier, and yeah. they did a survey. Is that something I can make a comment about, AJ? Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what exactly the survey was, the building envelope survey and who conducted it, but I just want to raise the point again about uh, my uh, support for getting funds from either ARPA or some other source if it's available to provide the school with a whole building ventilation system that could be integrated with the heating system. I think that would be extraordinarily beneficial to the school, to the students and to the teachers to keep their air quality hygienic. And um, also it would, it, could, it would also reduce moisture content in the air, which might also be a health issue and it certainly be a comfort issue. So whether or not that was included in this survey, Becky, I don't know, but I would like to just raise that and put that up, up there, out there. So, uh, cause I think the school would really benefit from having a whole building ventilation system that could be integrated with the present heating system. And it's pretty, I hope that the, that the town provides some funding for that. But if this other uh, Green Communities Act, uh, if it provides funding for that sort of thing, well, we should be looking into that, I think. I don't know if that's considered to be a green, but it sounds green to me. Um, they do, you know, we know the, the building envelope is covered by green communities. Um, I haven't seen ventilation, but I'll ask more questions. We're maxing out our grant with green communities because the LED lights all needed to be done. Um, which so that's what that's what going to be addressed lighting yeah and well it's gonna you can only do up to 50 percent of the grant on lighting so um a hundred thousand will go towards lighting and the other hundreds available for the building envelope and i think the quote is around 90 or eighty six thousand for the building envelope not just for the school but for all town buildings that's enhancing insulation and ceiling and so forth yeah because uh there was so much you know, you'd push a tile back in the school and there'd be this flapping plastic everywhere um, and air movement, spider webs. It spider isn't... webs? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's insulation and ceiling? Yeah. S-E-A-L? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Becky, yeah. is most of the lighting in the school now a fluorescent? Is that what the problem is? Well, they, they update, we updated to like the old fluorescents to the new fluorescents. And oh, most, wow. the, most of them are fluorescents and they're gonna be replaced with LEDs. Oh, okay. I was just wondering how, how far back we were on technology when it comes to lighting that building. I wasn't sure whether any, any other LED lighting had been used or something like that, you know, partially. Has it's been around for a while? Yeah. Okay. So it, it definitely needs the LED upgrade, mm -hmm. but it's um, that's quite expensive as well. But at least if we can, we can potentially, I think, um, go for the grant again next year. Hopefully, get the first chunk done with the two hundred thousand this year and apply again. Mm. Can Can you remind me, Becky? Are we have we actually? been awarded the grant yet or we're, we're submitting an application we're submitting an application okay. it's a competitive grant okay. um so we won't know for sure for a while okay got it okay um any other questions about while we're talking about school infrastructure uh before we move on all right uh, I think next up we have an expense report that came. Uh, let's see. I think it was the 22nd. Yeah, it's 
it's, I don't know, I, I pulled it up. It's, I've got September 20th is the date on the report itself. Um, I can tell you when we got it. Uh, it's 9.30 on mine. Yeah, mine says 9.30. So maybe I'm looking at the wrong one, okay. And we did get one this afternoon. I did, I'll send it out tomorrow, but I, okay. since we hadn't reviewed this one and I know it's better to get it to you with some time to review before the meetings. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so the one that, Bob, the one that you, you have, it, it's dated 9.30 at the top. It says uh, date 7 and 22 Right, but at the bottom of that, does it list it the date? 9.20 at the bottom, yes. Okay, got it, so, okay, so. Uh, does everybody have that one? Yep. Okay. Um, the one I have says um, uh, ends at 9 15, 2022. That's what so I'm looking at. And new one came out. Yeah, well, I'm going to forward you. Wait, well, well, hold on. Maybe I have it. Uh, it uh, when was it, it sent? It's sent on September 23rd at 9 30 a.m. Okay, got it. So it must be for the first quarter, right, Becky? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess this is this is our first time we're looking at a, a VADAR report, right? This yeah. Is the, that looks nice. The new, the new system. Yeah. Okay. We'll go through it by page by page, but I see on page two that the town collectors forty two point nine percent. Or but forty two point two nine percent of the budget. Yeah. Uh, is there some reason for that? Or yeah, there's contracts. Yeah, she contracts. spends the bulk of her expenses in the first, um, you know, around July after she gets it because she has annual maintenance contracts on her side. Oh, I see. Yeah. And she has to buy a huge amount of envelopes, and oh, yeah. she she does it you know, for more than one quarter. And she buys pre-stamped envelopes, so they're expensive. So um, I guess one thing I'm just kind of, I think we'll just have to get used to is, is the, this report doesn't sort of break out the lines by the usual categories, does it? Yeah. That we're used to seeing, um, like general government. I mean, I, um, right, it kind of flows right into right. It's all it's all just safety. one long, large list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think some getting used to. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's very different. Yeah, very much so. Don't hey, don't be so rigid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> uh, I see the highway department is way ahead of, of uh, schedule on their uh, maintenance machine maintenance. I wonder if something happens or something. Yeah, they've had a bunch of stuff. Um, I think a couple of trucks and they're one of the, what do you call that thing that, that cuts the brush on the side of the road? Yeah, the bush log on the tractor, yeah. Yeah, they had trouble with that as well as one of the lawnmowers. Um, on the main lawnmower was down and it took, took over two months to get it repaired. It was really... really really frustrating. I think people, they couldn't get the parts that they needed and it it's just everywhere. Up. Yeah. Yeah. The repair line is definitely up. Tim's been. Hopefully everything will stay good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can make a note of checking in with Tim since we're, we're meeting with him in a month or so on just if he foresees any uh, you know, this being a problem in terms of overspending this line, it'd be good to get like an early heads up to avoid some of the last minute nature of, of uh, you know, how things played out last year with the fire department. Okay. On page nine, contributory retirement is 93, 93%, 93.5%. Is that something that's paid for up front or something? Yep. 
I see. Yeah, they give us, I think it's like the health insurance, the health insurance, if we get a discount when we pay it. Uh -huh. um, not the health insurance, the, um, yeah, the Maya regular insurance. I see. And the Zadar, 0%, uh, is that the annual subscription rate? It's 20, or didn't we have some kind of a-, a What a page are you discount? on? I'm sorry, Bob, where are you? Uh, page 10, uh, Vedar. It's at the top of the page, the third item down. Okay, the software. We bought the software for 20,000. Yeah. And the, the thing that was gonna be our savings was also the maintenance. No, for five years, right? No something. Yeah. Maintenance fee. I think it was no, like our old system had an annual fixed increase. Mm -hmm. in 7%. Yeah. And the VADAR, if I remember correctly, was gonna be frozen for a certain period of time. But I don't think that's this line, right? This is actually the the buying it. That's the purchase, and we we haven't yeah. paid for it yet, is what, right? Well, um, it looks like so the Vader software itself is it was it we put it in the budget, and you know it's a capital expense, so it's not it's elsewhere. It, it's should be like in a fund thirty. Is that fund thirty? Right. Yeah, I would think, yeah. Because it's a, it's a purchase of a capital item, is it not? Or... Right, and then there was another portion of the cost that was in the budget, but this piece was, I think, a fund 30. And the fund 30s haven't shown up yet, so it might be there as well. But um, the report, I think, stops before the revolving accounts. So we're missing about five or six reports until... Um, until everything's closed. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to get more information on the VADAR and yeah. how it shows in the report, because this, this is confusing. It is. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I am confused by these negative amounts in the payment this period to date. Um, it's obviously trying to indicate something, but I don't know what it's indicating. Yeah. Here's an idea. Becky, do you okay, think it so, would be... So this isn't the regular budget. Uh, this, the, this, is a, this is one of the funds. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. This page 10, you mean, you were looking at? Yeah. Yeah, because this is this has stuff that's normally in Fund Thirty, see. like the school floors and the elementary school right. yeah, the sidewalk, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The speed yeah, so signs. Yeah. So because it goes over a couple of years, like the money for the speed signs came in last year, right? So it's not showing up here. Right. Um. Hmm. All right, I'll, I'll sit down with Gail on this one and so I can explain it better for you next time. It could be the timing of this report is making it confusing as well. So I mean, it looks like page seven is the last kind of familiar page to me. And yeah. then stuff after that is, and um, I always have trouble when there's not line numbers, which this is somebody else's program, so I might not get that, but... Um, Right. It's harder for me to, and, and because we're not seeing the labels we're used to, it's, it's a process of getting used to what this is. Yeah. Yeah, I well, I, I mean, to, to me, it looks like, you know, for every budget line, there's actually two lines. There's like an allocation and then there's an expenditure line. So that's, that's different, right? I don't remember that being the case with <laughs> our other, with our old budget system. But here's a thought. Do you think it would be possible and or valuable to have Gail just on an agenda at our next meeting, just to kind of walk us through the new kind of format for expense reports, since this is something we, 
you know, we do spend time on most of our meetings. Um, I will ask her, um, with her retirement, she's working on uh, day hours in yeah. Shutesbury and she's not working any evenings. So okay. um, I'll see if she will be able to do that or not. Okay, yeah. Um, all right, Jim, did you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, considering how expensive this fade hour program was, don't, do they, or can you come up with another way of viewing the same information? In other words, do they have some options whereby it could be just organized differently? I, 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 I'm just wondering, I'm just trying to figure out whether, whether VADAR can provide yet another way to display data other than what we're seeing here. And that might help Susie and it would certainly help me. Um, I was presented with two different reports that were basically, both of them were horizontal in orientation. And the other one I found more confusing than this one. So mm. I picked this one. Um, I, you know, we can't just make it like the old one. Oh, I know, I know that, but I just, I, you know, I sometimes they yeah. have options. I'm just asking whether there are any options. Other well, than um, I'll get her. We can get. I'll send out the options that um, she showed me originally, and I'll and find out if they have it, if she has uh, any others. Okay, that would be good. I think that'd be good to, for us to look at that. Just, just a thought. I think, Susie. I think that the regular budget, as we expense report, as we usually see it, does. I think go through page nine and then page 10, I think, Becky, you're right. That this is where we usually go into uh, uh, count 30. I, mean, I think that it's going to be a huge adjustment for us to see that right. once we come to understand right. how it's being presented, but it'd be useful if we can get more information. But I think it's not really that confusing. It's just not what we used to see. Yeah, I agree. Nine, page nine seems to be really where we're at. Okay. Good. It's got a bottom line, even. Yeah. Right. I see. You'll yeah. learn. Monkeys yeah. can be trained. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, so good. So, yeah, but those things make more sense now that we know that they're count 30 items and that they're, yeah. maybe they'll be more fleshed out next time we see the next report. But yeah, and the next report will include all your revolving funds, I'm pretty yeah. sure. So, and those are missing right now because um, the whole year has to be totally closed out and it's not yet for those to appear in the reports. Um, so we'll have more changes to come, <laughs> more to figure out. All right. Okay. Um, all right, we're cruising along here. Uh, are there any other reports uh, that folks want to sh share? Uh, any committees meet since uh, our, the 14th, since our last meeting? Susie? Yeah, the school committee met on 9-15 and um, there were a few items I thought were relevant <clears throat> for the FinCom okay. from their agenda. Um, uh, the principal has, um, I can't read my own writing, developed some guidelines for the school choice spending. She basically has a rubric. She checks if it is um, an item is an immediate need that arises or it will not affect the long-term program or it's not needed to fold into the general budget. If an item meets those criteria, then she um, would target it for school choice. They will be considered, um, there was a discussion to say, <clears throat> considering other criteria like a threshold level. Um, so it's a evolving process um, and she has those three starting criteria um, for when to use school choice money. Is the goal, just on that point, Susie, is the goal for the committee to um, provide feedback and then ultimately have a written kind of criteria that they've approved? Um, for yeah, yeah it, it hasn't seemed to me and being an observer that it's the school committee is, um, the chair hasn't said, you know, we're going to 
we're going to figure this out and um, form a subcommittee or whatever. Um, they they have uh, listened to um, Jackie's process and um, and then said um, that there could be a process to consider another criteria of establishing a threshold level. So that would um, that's kind of a bigger picture way. She's dealing with budgeting for uh, situations that arise. And then if they do end up deciding there's a threshold of, of a balance they wanna keep and what they would do with the money beyond that, that's, that's probably a bigger, a, a broader discussion with the school committee. They're, they are aware of it. And um, so I, so I um, think we'll be seeing something come more out of, more developed this year. Okay. Um, the second thing is that the parking lot is considered pretty much of a disaster in terms of its condition. Um, Steve is gonna talk to the capital planning committee and the building committee about it. Um, it really was sort of, it sounded like there was a timetable that just kind of walked, they walked past, it got walked past. It was supposed to be really looked at and dealt with, I think they said uh, five years ago, but I don't have that in my notes. And so um, it's viewed as needing attention. And so um, Steve Sullivan, who's on the school committee, will be talking to the capital planning and, and building committee about addressing some of the parking lot needs. Okay. Um, the third thing is that um, it starts at the Union 28 level. Um, they are going to seek a community compact grant for the Collins Center to do a regional efficiency study. And um, so the union was looking to do that, that the union is, cannot be the applicant. It has to be an individual town. And um, Wendell and Leverett are, have already had a community compact grant. So um, they are going to check in with Becky and um, and the Shootsbury Select Board and make an application for this study um, by the Collins Center. And the grant would be a $32,000 grant and it would help develop efficiencies that could be handled at the region. Um, and they have been doing more of those, um, but they were pretty excited um, in talking to somebody at the Collins Center that they feel like they could develop some more um, regional efficiencies. And uh, they voted $20,000 out of school choice for an increase for a math interventionist position. It's now at, <laughs> great, uh, they're going to four days a week. Um, so due to the COVID situation and um, remote learning, they know that they need more interventionist help. So they increased, they voted to increase um, that position um, with 20,000 out of school choice. They did nature's classroom this year um, and that came out of school choice money. That's an away overnight camp. Um, for the fifth and sixth graders, and they hope to repeat that every other year. Um, there is a budget audit being done for FY21 right now, and then it will, the next audit will come again in three years. They said that the heating system update had run into some supply chain issues, and, it has, and that was just noted. And, oh, and they knew about the um, building envelope evaluation and they 
figured um, <clears throat> the school committee will receive the recommendations that come out of that report, which I know that Becky told us there would be a report at some point. So that's from the school committee. All right. That, Susie, that um, Collins Center application, yep. that's, so that's to kind of promote, 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 promote efficiency in terms of kind of managing the district, right? We're not talking about like in so they might environmental figure, efficiency. I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, they might figure out some services that can be administered through the union, okay. not through the individual schools. Got it. Okay. Um, and okay. Uh, they were, they had, I guess they heard a presentation and they felt like this was potentially something they would really benefit from. Okay, that sounds interesting. Jim? Are these the, Collins, are these the folks that um, were interested in trying to get Shootsbury to agree to some sort of a, 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 a cooperative server arrangement or something like this? I, I, I sort of rings a bell. I know that they did the, the Wendell Leverett uh, police agreement. They worked with those uh -huh. towns on that. I don't know anything, Becky knows more. Yeah, the Collins Center does personnel issues. They um, mostly an efficient, the efficiencies would be in the use of personnel, the staffing in different ways um, between all four schools. Mm. Bob? Yeah, I wanted to, first of all, Susie, I wanted to ask you, I know that the region it now has one of its personnel in our school. They have their office. Who is who's in our school this year from the regional office? Do you know? I don't have that map in my mind. Uh, okay. When I see the meeting, they're talking about. Uh, I don't know who it is. That was kind of an interesting efficiency move by yeah. them. To do that, save some uh, expense. But I wanted to just uh, take the opportunity to uh, just reinforce something we talked about. I think at our last meeting. That is uh, us having uh, enrollment figures over time, history of enrollment as part of the budget so that we can anticipate. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was that how uh, changes in enrollment uh, can affect our, our obligations down the road with assessments and so forth. But it's just good to have that information with the budget request uh, as part of their package. And I'd like them to provide that to us. Um, I'll, I'll make a note. Thanks. And the other thing I wanted to put, I don't know when and if we're going to be talking about the school choices, but I'm not, I'm not clear that we, we, are, we have something worked out with the school committee on this and with the school administration, but I hope that we can get something that's acceptable to all sides, uh, to all parties, uh, you know, soon, so that we can go into the, to the season without any distractions, eh? I think you should... Um probably talk to Dan Hayes. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll try to do that at some point. Thanks. Okay. Um, Bob, you and I are gonna meet with the regional school committee. Thursday. Town representatives on Thursday about this, the guardrails committee. So, I'm stepping in for George just for this this week since he's out of the country. So our next meeting we'll have an update on that. Um, any other committees meet since the 14th? Becky, do you know if personnel met while George wasn't there? Oh, no, George met with personnel in September. Uh, he will miss the October meeting, but he did his homework before he left. Um, so we're going to have um, spreadsheets that we need for our October meeting from him. Mm -hmm. Great. So AJ, on for yep. Thursday night, I mean, basically we're going to report that the committee voted to uh, to to just support right. the statutory method with the five-year rolling average, and not interested in the uh, guardrail-ish uh, concept, right? Right. That we had a discussion about mm -hmm. it and a vote, and there's. Okay. The consensus view was that it's not um, a valuable change or addition to the to the assessment method. Good, I'm clear on that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Jim, is there anything from broadband that we should be 
aware of. Well, if anybody has any questions, I could probably answer them. It's um, turned out like most things that have been delays and yeah. um, mostly thanks to Crown Castle, which is a, what is a multinational uh, corporation. And they seem to, they were supposed to um, give us our own 10 gigabyte fiber line um, back in, 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 in mid July and it's, still hasn't been done and they complain about personnel or I don't know you know they have all these excuses so we're sort of limping along on on our former connection with Crocker in that respect so so it's not an accomplished it it's not a fully accomplished deal um, at this point but you know um, it's it's we we fortunately uh, Crocker can hold on to um, that other 10 gigabyte connection and um, and for as long as we need it. So but that's that's been a sort of a problem. And um, people are gonna be billed, um, Shrewsbury um, subscribers are gonna be billed probably for, for September and October beginning right now, um, because there was um, some snafus in getting the, the, um, the list of subscribers from Crocker to Shelled um it, it's it's too complicated to explain what what went wrong on that one but it, it that accounts for the delay and why uh, you know the signups um the sign up envelopes with your account number only sh didn't show up to your household aj but did show up to people who lived in shootsbury because of, uh, i was uh, gonna ask you about that okay. yeah well no well the problem is is that <clears throat> is that um uh, yeah, post office box. A post yeah. office doesn't forward, you know, um, those things. I, it, it it's complicated, but it's 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 been worked out, and okay. and and so all of that is um, should be okay. Should I didn't be fine. Get either. Well, that's a surprise because you 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 do have a uh, a Shutesbury address, a, a Shutesbury mailing well, I address. I might have my PO box. I don't know. Oh, uh, which is where? Yeah. It used oh to well, yeah, honest. yeah, that'll be a problem if it was. Um, yeah, that that would be a problem. It, you know, any Amherst address would be a problem. At least initially it was, but that's been straightened out, straightened out. Since, okay. since that time. Yeah. I have um, one thing to say about the the shootsbury.net. Yeah, um, they were much more proficient in moving their wires off the notorious pole by the lake than either National Grid or Verizon. So that happened yesterday, um, within probably 10 days of when they determined they should move ahead and do it and not wait for any um, notice from Verizon. Verizon still has not moved their wires or mm -hmm. the pole. Um, we're, I'm working on chasing them down. I finally have what might be a good number, mm -hmm. um, but we'll find out. But they did a great job. Shield did the work, didn't they, Jim? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, because they. The nice thing about Shield is they have their their own. Uh, there's a huge array of uh, you know bucket trucks and the rest of it. So we don't have to sort of shop around whether it's Surtex or Triwire. Triwire went bankrupt after all, and really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They folded. Um, I guess they're yeah, a customer. customer. Yeah, we were. There. <laughs> Uh, they did a wonderful job for us, but the, uh, their management within TriWire's organization wasn't the best, and and people were leaving and being hired away, and you know it's just very competitive out there, I guess. But <clears throat> but Shell, you know, Shell's a, it's all built into one sort of organization, and they've got a whole fleet of bucket trucks, and they and new installations have been going much much faster than. Than, than was the case when um, when we were dependent upon Crocker and Surtex to do them. So, I mean, people are people if they call now, they're able to get service within two weeks, and that's it's never been that fast before. So, Sheld is definitely um, um, a, a, a huge improvement on on um, on on at least that one aspect of the operation of Shrewsbury Net. That's great. Good. Okay. Susie? Um, we did an exercise with Jim Walton when he was chair of sort of looking down the line mm -hmm. at our process and saying, um, here's some here's some things we want to touch on. And then we yeah. kind of sorted them out for when would when that would fit. 
Yeah, so, you're right. And he, and he had like a spreadsheet for kind of keeping track of them, right? Yeah, which I probably have in my last year's folder. Um, and, they, and these were sort of like big picture process? Yeah. Yep. Everyone? Yeah. 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 Um, so I think that, you know, where we can end this meeting and we might pick it, we'll pick a new date, a yeah. uh, new meeting, but I'm wondering if we would want to circulate that from last year. Or, yeah. yeah. And then people can look at it and begin to sort of formulate how you go from here to, because our next engagement is really the hearing um, for whoever it is, highway and highway and police. And so um, if we see something on that list that we want to, maybe we could even send it to you, AJ, and you could put it on the agenda. Yeah. I could find that and get it to you, get it to yeah. us. So I'm wondering if, um, no, I'm really glad you reminded me of that, Susie. I sort of forgotten that there was that, um, that list. And I think this, yeah, it is, it, it, and it, it had sort of big picture items that are sometimes difficult to adjust, to address in the middle of budget season. So um, it would be good to take a, a fresh look at that and maybe add, identify a couple of items on there that we want to actually do some work on um, this year. So um, yeah, if you do have, I mean, I'm sure I could dig it up as well. Or maybe does anybody know when Jim is? Um, He'll be back at their next meeting. He's not due to arrive back in the states. I think till tonight or tomorrow. Okay, got it. All right. So I might just reach out to him and just ask him to um, share with me the the last version of, or most recent version of that. Yeah. Um, Okay, that's a good idea. Um, should we talk about uh, next next meeting? Schedule a, a follow-up meeting. So, you know, I was wondering. I mean, we've got budgets are going to come in on the thirty first or around. We've got um, we've got highway and police on the fifteenth of November. So, I mean, there's a few options. I mean, we could just meet on the 1st of November. That's a month basically from now. I don't know if we if we have work that we want to do before then. Um, what if what do folks think about meeting on the 1st? So, does that Becky's uh, coordinated? Oh yeah. No, we've got a We've got to check with Becky on select board. Yep, that's that works. Um, uh, okay. Select board meets the twenty fifth and the eighth. Okay. Well, uh, if something comes up, AJ, we can always add a meeting in the yeah. In the interim, but I don't see we have anything to do. So the first yeah time to... yeah okay. So let's do that, and that'll give us you know we'll have a sense from Becky about which of the departments have submitted budgets um we can start to um make that information available to committee members okay the um the other discussion and and i did write the notes from the um track from the meeting about the track yeah. but i i guess i would i'm not very clear about the timeline but i do think we should be having some I should have a clearer picture about yeah. who, who are the people and when they speak, because um, I think it's going to be a discussion and I'd like to um, make sure we um, find a time to do that. And in some ways, it might be easier to do it before the department meeting schedule. Right. Uh, Susie, would that include, uh, you know, I've, I've been thinking and spending some time looking into this into, into this track and field you know whether to go with um <clears throat> whether to go with grass or not uh and um will the finance committee have an opportunity to vote on which approach they prefer to take because that that at least would count i think in the in the greater in the greater um 
uh, perspective. Um, if we if we had a say, because we have both a financial interest in it, how much it's going to cost, and all of that, and and so that that might um, form a, a part of our opinions, and we might have other reasons as well. But I'm wondering if 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 AJ, we you know there'll be an opportunity not only for discussion but to actually vote. So the finance committee voted yes on this or no on this or whatever, having to do specifically with the track. I mean, my understanding, Susie, my or, or Becky, I mean, is that that's a decision of the regional school committees yeah. uh, to make, and it sounds like they've essentially made that decision, right? I mean, or at least they've that's they they're, they're moving forward with a plan for option three, the, the reoriented track. Is that accurate? I don't know if what we saw was how to lay out a financial picture but not a done deal so okay. i actually um haven't figured out um who to talk to there's yeah. bob sent me the article from the boston globe and that mm -hmm. seems to me to go to the track committee the committee that's making the choice they need that information i'm sure they got that information because a lot of people get the boston globe um i don't believe it's the finance committee's job to make, to choose the specs of the project. I do believe we should be prepared to figure out where we would, where, if and where we would source the funding. Right. So our role is going to be to make a recommendation how to fund Shootsbury's obligation. Correct. For that. Yeah, right. that's, it's limited to that. Can I, can I just raise a point here? What? Uh, go ahead. The point I want to raise is we have to recommend to the town meeting whether or not they want to support funding it. They ultimately pay for it. So don't we have an obligation to have an opinion about it? I mean, we, you're, you're, Susie, you're saying that someone else that is the regional school committee makes the decision to build a new uh, artificial turf track and this could be a new location and a new orientation for the soccer field and so forth. And it's going to cost $5 million. And they're going to say, this is how it's going to be sliced up. And then we say, oh, yeah, all we have to figure out is how to pay for this. We don't have any choice in whether we support it or not. But somewhere along the line, the town meeting has to decide. Uh, I think two or three, a majority of the towns in the region have to support it. Do they not, Becky? Yeah. So we have to weigh in. So. For but, example, but the responsibility of the FinCom is to present a, a, a funding plan that will work for the town of Shutesbury to the voters for the item that's come forward from the regional school. Well, so Bob, yeah. I think I, I guess I, I guess I think this is not in some ways this is not different from other sort of capital kinds of projects where you know the town is ultimately going to have to approve it because there'll be some there'll be a warrant and we'll have you know we'll as individuals we'll have an opportunity to to um kind of speak our mind about it but as a committee our job if it's if it's been approved um our job is going to be to to make a recommendation about how to fund it, um, but that but that's not going to preclude you or any other individual on the committee from voicing an opinion about the worthiness of the project overall, right? But I don't think it's the I, I, I don't I'm not I don't think it's the committee's job to sort of approve the project as worthy or unworthy. I guess that's that's my instinct, but. Yeah, the recommendation is about the funding of the project, just like with any other capital item that would come forward from the capital planning department, you know, committee. It's it's the same situation. The finance committee's job isn't to go back and and like you said, recommend one type of track over the other type of track. If, well, Becky, uh, who does actually voice a, 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 an opinion for the town? Is it the select board? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to know 
about um, uh, about who who's going to for the town make a decision about um, about which direction they want to go, whether they want to go for the grass or whether they want to go for artificial turf. That's basically what it comes down to. And I, believe I, I yeah, I believe that decision will be made when we're asked to vote. It will already have been made by the school committee, regional school committee. So then the town's decision is in the response with their vote. Right. I thought I, I thought from reading what Susie sent out and all the rest of it is that it was it's still an, an ongoing discussion, and you know there had to be a certain at least level of agreement between between us and Leverett and and Pelham as to what we thought would be best, um, and so we're going to be asked to make an opinion or cast an opinion on this. But the opinion is what's best for the funding of the town. What. You know, you know, I know that I know that, but but regardless of the type, it's what can the town afford and willing to support. Right. And, and that's that is, they're yeah. still asking that. They're still asking that. They're still and asking, yeah. Exactly. Want to put it on the agenda to begin to sort of mm -hmm. flesh out yeah. what we know and what we um what funding we would draw on. And I know that the CPC is involved in this. Um, so yeah. there was some discussion at the last meeting about whether we would have, a, you know, maybe one of us would go ask the CPC and then represent to the committee what the CPC is thinking. I mean, I don't think we have to have the whole CPC people here. That's not the way they generally meet, but um, the, the, so much, the, the, the CPC isn't going to tell you that they're going to vote for or against it because they stick strictly to their process. Right. Um, the question isn't really for the CPC. The question is for the region. What are they going to propose to the CPC? I guess I guess the um, the part the CPC might be handling is yes. There's X number of dollars in the unrestricted yeah. or uncategorized expense. Mm -hmm. They might just yeah, they gave that information to the region. Yeah. But that's not that's not weighing in on which project that they support or don't support. It's yeah. No, it's just so giving them the framework of the the amount possible that the town could support in a CPC grant. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think what I'd like to do is just I'm so glad you brought this up, Susie. I think we're, I'm going to put an item on the agenda um, for our next meeting to kind of discuss sort of what our process is going to be. Mm -hmm. But I think in the interim. I'm going to try to do some sort of information gathering, like just I'll, I'll, I'm going to look at the agendas for the regional school committee's recent meetings, see if I can watch some some of their discussion around kind of what the where they are in the process and what are the sort of next steps and what are they going to be coming to towns for information on. AJ, so, it might be yeah, it, go might, ahead, Bob. it might be possible for us to bring this issue up on Thursday night. I'm not sure yeah. that it'll be. Uh, it might be useful to just ask the question in that forum because there's going to be everybody's going to be there. Yeah, Doug Slott is going to be there. Michael Morris is going to be there. Uh, all the big shots from Amherst mm -hmm. are going to be there. Yeah. And this, we need to know, you know, what? How precisely does this work? You know, when right. do we just, get to? I think right. personally, I believe that our responsibility is to to advise the town meeting. So we do have a an obligation to evaluate what's right. good financially for the town and what might be excessive for an obligation and so forth. But I don't I don't see that, that we can avoid that by just passing the buck to the school committee. That's our obligate, that's our, our mandate. But anyway, I think might be might be useful for us to raise this issue if it's an opportunity arises on Thursday yeah, night. I agree. At, at a minimum, just to find out sort of what, what is the time like what is the process that they um they have in place for this or um, mm -hmm. what are they exactly, doing? right. Because it's not clear to me. I don't know about you all, but it's not clear no. to me what's going on. No, but no. I think there's a lot of missing parts at this a point. Lot. I think that we're uninformed. I don't think they're missing. We haven't seen them. Um, yeah. It's a process to follow them. It doesn't mean it's not being um, worked on. And I actually would, I'll probably try to get a hold of what kind of, uh, who's in charge of the project? Who's, who's yeah. looking at the project? Yeah. I'll, I'll get that contact. Well, I, and I do want to remind folks that Doug Slaughter was at the select board meeting and Susie was the only one who came to ask questions. So that was a missed opportunity by finance committee members. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and they did, you know, he's, they are trying to work together in a fashion that will, you know, where all the towns can feel that they can participate at a level that's not a, a, a major burden. So they're, they're trying to really, you know, look everything over on the financial side and what the ramifications are. So I think it's, mm -hmm. yeah. They're, they're, they reached out to us. Right. And that, that information sheet he gave is just sort of a first thing to look, it's something right. to mm -hmm. look at. It's not a done deal. Yeah. It was just to give us a, a, a yeah. just even a right. ballpark yeah. of what we might be. Right. But, so, but sooner or later, a choice is gonna to have to be made between whether it's gonna be grass or artificial turf. I mean, that's, that's the fundamental uh, question of, you know, that's gonna decide how much it's gonna cost the works. And I, I just I have no idea when this is going to take place, but it certainly is going to be an important issue for us and or for the town to discuss which which one do we support and why. All right, so what we're going to we're going to discuss this. Well, I, again, I'm not I my my impression was that that was really um, that this, this that school is, committee had studied correct. Thank okay. You. That the, that the school committee had sort of done a pretty extensive review, sorry, the regional school committee of the different scenarios and that they were recommending um, moving forward with that option three. But again, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like pull some information from um, recent meet, regional school committee meetings and get get a little more informed about kind of what the latest updates are are and then um and i think bob's suggestion is a good one of just asking for an update at thursday's meeting and so we'll, we'll have i think mm -hmm. some some better information to share at our next meeting and then we'll, we should have a discussion about what how we see our role and um what what we're going to need to do as a committee and aj we should have the <laughs> We might have the boiler information as well uh, from the MSBA to put on that agenda. Okay. All right. And then I'll also, again, I'm gonna speak with Jim Walton about that sort of long, that, that long-term sort of uh, planning and process list that he had. And there might be an item or two from that list that we wanna talk about. Um, at our next meeting as well. So, okay. So would you, will you send that out to us and yes. we say to you, yeah, I'd like to put that on the agenda for November 1st. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Bob. Yeah. I, did you go to George Washington University? No, my son goes there. Do you know the, do you know what the, the nickname of the teams are, is called? I think it was the Colonials, but I think the they're Colonials. Yes, they're, they're, they're thinking of changing it. Yeah, are they going to change it? Thank goodness, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know that they've actually done that yet. But I, think I don't think so. There's a there's there's a <laughs> lot of discussion about it. Yes, you wear the colon. You have to say the Colonials on the back of your uh, sweatshirt. No, no, it just says George Washington University. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Good. Is there anything else? that anybody needs to share? Okay, we made good time today. I appreciate it, guys. Um, although I think next meeting, we're, we've, we've got we're already got a, a larger agenda planned for that, but that's okay. Um, just before I hop off, did, has, did anybody hear from, from Melody? Um, I was expecting her at, at this meeting, but maybe I missed the- uh, I did not hear from her. Anybody get an email or anything? Okay, no. so no. I'm gonna check in with her and see if- uh, um, if she's getting the, you know, uh, can I make a motion? We adjourn. Right. All right, I'll second that. All right, let's vote. Bob, uh, votes aye. Hemingway aye. Cashew aye. Mosier aye. Thank okay. you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Good night. All right. Good night.